Apple yesterday launched the new iPhone 14 lineup with satellite communications, but no more SIMs and SIM slots. We've got all the implications from the mobile internet standpoint after this. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to give you our annual look at what's new in Apple's iPhone. Now, normally we don't cover specific phone models here at the Mobile Internet Resource Center, but because the Apple iPhone kind of sets the trends for well, the entire mobile industry around the world, and particularly in the United States, it's always interesting to see what is new on the connectivity front each year from Apple because, well, that kind of paves the way for everything else in the year ahead, whether you're an Apple fan or not. And this year, there's some really interesting connectivity new developments. On the exciting side is Apple is rolling out emergency SOS communications via satellite. This means that you will be able to, if you are in you know, a tough spot, you're broken down, you're hurt, you're out hiking and lost, you'll be able to pull out your iPhone 14, press a button, It'll guide you to hold it up to the sky and send some emergency text messages to a dispatch center that will help you communicate and get help. So pretty exciting feature, you know, communicating to a satellite straight from a phone um, and getting help when you need it the most. But the important thing is this is a very, very limited feature. It is being done in partnership with Global Star, the company behind the spot messengers, the emergency trackers and, and uh, communicators that hikers have used for years and such, but no more carrying around a separate device. It's built right into the iPhone 14s, but Spot and devices like that are very, very, very low bandwidth connections. Apple's saying, It'll take about 15 seconds to send a message and maybe even several minutes if there's light foliage overhead. Super slow, no sending pictures, no talking, and it doesn't work for apps. It's just for emergency messaging. You can't even send a message to your friend saying, hey, I'm running late or something like that. You can do emergency messaging and you could send locations out to people who are tracking you on the Apple's Find My Friends. So very limited feature. But it's there, it's built into every iPhone 14, and it will be available for free for at least two years to everybody who buys one. So an exciting feature, and well, unlike the satellite connectivity that T-Mobile and Starlink teased two weeks ago, what Apple is announcing will be available to millions of people as of November, as opposed to a year plus from now. So Apple's doing some pretty exciting stuff as far as satellites go. We'll see what sort of future plans, whether they intend to uh, enable more functionality, which we expect they do. They're investing a lot in Global Star and in the satellite network. But the big thing to keep in mind, the big difference here, Apple's is live today. They already have the FCC spectrum rights. They already have the satellites. They already have everything ready to go. What everybody else is doing as far as satellite is in prototype form or still a ways away. So exciting. They're kind of paving the way, but we'll see a lot of other phones in other ways, figuring out ways to integrate satellite in the future. So satellite straight to phones is something that is coming. New, new change in the mobile industry. We'll see a lot more of that in the years ahead. The other change that we're hoping we're not going to see a lot of in the year ahead that Apple is trying to pioneer with the iPhone 14 is it is basically the first mainstream phone to eliminate the SIM slot. There's no more physical SIM slot, no more SIM tool, no more SIM cards. You are eSIM only on the iPhone 14. That means you, good, the good news about eSIMs is it makes provisioning new plans a lot easier. You can activate a plan with a carrier without needing to go to a store, without needing to have something mailed to you. You can activate a plan um, via an email or an app or just via interacting with tech support and they can activate us eSIM straight on your phone. And just like you know, past iPhones, you can actually have two lines active at once. So you can have two eSIMs active at once, two lines that'll ring, two phone numbers and whatnot. And you can even have multiple eSIMs in a library, just two active and multiple stored. So it's very, very convenient until you get to the point of you want to use that SIM card in a device that's not an iPhone. So Apple makes it easy to move an eSIM to another iPhone um, and just transfer them between them. But if you want to take that physical SIM and use it in a different kind of device, whether it's a, another non-Apple phone or in a hotspot or in a router, or you want to use a plan and a, a, a data plan from a carrier that doesn't offer eSIM service, 
Uh, so a lot of MVNOs and a lot of international uh, carriers and you know quite a lot of places do not support eSIM yet. You are out of luck if you have an iPhone 14. If you have an iPhone 14 that was purchased in the USA, that is. Because eSIM is further along in the USA, this change is only applying to iPhone 14 models sold in the USA, not to the worldwide models, at least not yet. But again, this is <clears throat> Apple, just like they re were the first to remove headphone jacks, and now most phones don't have that anymore. Apple is being the first to get rid of the SIM slots, and that's probably going to percolate around, but there's a lot of potential frustrations to be aware of. Now, what else is new on the connectivity front? Well, the um, strongly strong suspicion is that the new iPhone 14 lineup is moving to Qualcomm's X65 modem. So it's a new generation of 5G modem, which has got some exciting new capabilities. It's a, a decent evolution over the X60 that was in the iPhone 13. Um, some of the more interesting things is, well, one is the band N53 support, which is what is enabling that uh, link to the uh, uh, Global Star satellite. So that's kind of baked in. Uh, Global Star worked with Qualcomm and Apple to do this. So that is in that chip. Um, there is also now support for the bands that Dish Network is using for their Project Genesis. So the um, you know the iPhone 14 has support for band 70, um, which is kind of an oddball band that is going to be one of the most important ones for Dish Genesis in the years ahead. So as Dish Genesis expands, well, Apple's now ready for that. I think they're the first phone that actually has all the Dish Genesis bands turned on. But again, we'll see as Dish becomes more important as a fourth carrier, we'll see those bands be supported by more people in more places. And there's a few other you know, new additional 5G bands that are being turned on. There's a AT&T FirstNet being able to be run on 5G now and a few other little minor tweaks, making it a very future-proof 5G connectivity device. Now, there is one other really important thing, that a trend that Apple is continuing with the iPhone 14 that is a bit disappointing. So um, in the past with the iPhone 12 and the 13, all the iPhone models sold in the USA have millimeter wave 5G, which matters a lot to Verizon. That's super fast, but super short range 5G that can be capable of gigabits per second speed. So some really exciting performance. But because those millimeter wave antenna modules are actually very, very expensive and you know millimeter wave has not been deployed very much other than by Verizon, uh, Apple left that out of the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 13 other than the USA edition, the model sold in the United States. And well, even though now millimeter wave is starting to pick up in other countries and other places, it still remains that way. So the millimeter wave radios are only still in the iPhone 14 in the USA version. So you actually have a little bit of a dilemma. If you can, you know, you want a SIM slot, you can buy an iPhone 14 in Canada, but you get rid of the uh, millimeter wave compatibility and a, you know, that's basically the key difference there. Or you buy the USA version, you lose the SIM slot, but you have millimeter wave radios and that future proofing there. So a little bit of trade-offs like there always are between the international models. We go in more depth into what are the other tiny little tweaks between the international models and the USA model in the uh, article that goes along with this. And there is one other little connectivity thing with a bit disappointing with the iPhone 14. We've been expecting for years that when was Apple going to embrace Wi-Fi 6E. So this is the next generation of the uh, Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax standard that expands Wi-Fi to use a whole new bunch of spectrum on 6 gigahertz. So whole, basically a whole bunch of new lanes in the sky for Wi-Fi. This is standard's been out for several years now, but basically there's hardly any devices, hardly any routers, hardly any access points that are using Wi-Fi 6E yet. And it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. There's no routers, so phones don't support it. There's very few devices that have embraced Wi-Fi 6E. Um, was this gonna be the year? Nope, still no Wi-Fi 6E in the iPhone 14. It's still the same Wi-Fi that's been there for years. And we're basically looking across the entire mobile industry right now and thinking almost all the device makers seem to have made a decision to skip Wi-Fi 6E. There were so many part shortages over the last few years that just derailed it, and people are gonna start focusing on the Wi-Fi 7 standard, which is still another year or two away. So no big changes on the Wi-Fi front, nothing too exciting there. 
some very interesting changes on the cellular front and some extremely interesting changes when it comes to satellite. That's what's new with the iPhone 14 on the connectivity front. If you're concerned about the cameras and the screens and the, all the other interesting new features, you're worried at the wrong channel, the Mobile Internet Resource Center. We're focused on explaining the connectivity side of things to you, and I think we've covered that here. And, well, the pretty exciting phones. Oh, the other important thing comes in purple now if you want the iPhone 14 Pro. That's like actually, it will improve your connectivity to use the purple model. We can certify that. Anyway, that's up the latest with the iPhone 14, and uh, stay connected. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.